Bauza's fusion of an African-American big band with traditional Cuban rhythms was groundbreaking, right down to its name. Just the fact that the name that they chose for that band was Machito and his Afro-Cubans says a lot. Machito and his Afro-Cubano. A lot of people object that, 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 that Afro thing there. It's the first time where we see this kind of public acknowledgement through the naming of the band of something that is African-derived. I'm of African descent. And the rhythm, the producing music we play is African. Nobody was acknowledging Africa. All of a sudden, this band comes out and right in your face, it says Machito and the Afro-Cubans. Bauza and Machito had a strong base to work from. Granted U.S. citizenship in 1917, over 30,000 Puerto Ricans had migrated to New York, many settling in East Harlem, which came to be known as El Barrio, or Spanish Harlem. The mix of jazz and traditional rhythms spoke directly to this new generation of New York Latinos. They provided both an audience and musicians for the band. I stood in front of them. Bowser's own history gives us some idea of one black Latino's voluntary construction of an African-American musical and social identity and the tensions among New York's Latinos that it both reflected and caused. Raised by white godparents in Cuba, Mario Bauza was forced early on to confront issues of racial identity in a country that he claims was more racist than the United States. And yet musically speaking, this prodigy had training and experience paralleling that of many Puerto Rican musicians of the same era. Schooled by private teachers and in public bands, while still a boy Bauza was playing operas, ballets, zarzuelas, and other classical works in the Havana Symphonic Orchestra. Nevertheless, Bauza's first glimpse of Harlem in 1929, while he was recording in Victor's New York office studios with a Cuban group, fascinated him. Here a big black race, they had everything, they had shows, they had good orchestras, good artists. Upon his return to Cuba, when his padrino, godfather, inquired about his future plans, he replied, I only got one plan. I want to be with the people like me, to know what it is to be a black man in a black country. My roots have got to be there. Despite linguistic and cultural differences, not to mention the potentially greater prestige of playing in a symphonic orchestra in his native country, Bauza chose to throw in his lot with African Americans playing popular music. He spent the next ten years with the orchestras of Noble Sissel, Don Redman, Cab Calloway, Chick Webb, and others. Feeling betrayed by the racism of lighter-skinned Latinos, he lived in a black section of Harlem. According to Bauza, this horrified many Latino acquaintances, who, if they could not live downtown, were going to maintain themselves as a group apart from the unenviable North American black population. All these Puerto Rican families wanted me to move to their house. I was a single man. Mario, why don't you live with us? No, no, I'm working with these people and you know, I want to be with them I'm making my living with them. Well, all right, but you know these black people. But I'm black too. What are you talking about? 